Okay. Now, when the Megazord was pretty much, you know, down and out, a lot of times it would have to break, separate into its individual components in order to, uh, forego its, uh, to, uh, to keep it from its destruction, the Power Rangers would need help. And once it was their enemy, then it became a valuable ally. Dragonzord would enter the scene. Now, Dragonzord would be... Let me get these guys out of the way. Dragonzord would be the... Considered as backup. Controlled by Tommy via the uh, Dragon Dagger, the Dragon Zord would enter and would either surprise the other Rangers by uh, firing from its uh, missile launching armor, or you know just a like a sudden like tail whip. Nevertheless, Dragon Zord was a very valuable ally. And could also morph with all the other dinosaurs to, with to create some uh, interesting Zord combinations. One being uh, Dragon Zord in battle mode or Dragon Zord in fighting mode. I like to call it Dragon Zord hand to hand combat mode. And uh, the Mega Dragon Zord. But first, we're going to review the toy as is. Dragon Zord, you know, when it comes out of the box, you pretty much have to assemble it. You have to place the little uh, cod piece on the chest plate and place the chest plate inside the main body. You have to pull out its arms and then you have to stick the tail in. And there you have Dragon Zord. Dragon Zord was, uh, according to uh, some Japanese sources, of course, we all know that Dragon Zord was based off of Dragon Caesar from the Kuro Sentai Ju Ranger uh, that preceded Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It was designed as a way, you know, when it comes out of the ocean and just wreaks havoc on in Tokyo or in Power Rangers' case, Angel Grove. It mimics that of Godzilla, and in fact. That was what it, the designers were trying to do. They were trying to create an homage of sorts to their favorite monster flick, Godzilla. And really, Godzilla was the not the first, but one of the first movies to actually feature suit, you know, men in suits, you know, wreaking havoc in a uh, model city. So that was kind of cool. But of course, we in America didn't know that. It was just, you know, this raging Zord that Tommy had. And one thing I really hated was when people used to say that Tommy was their favorite Power Ranger, when people would ask why, and they say he has his own Zord. Well, that's bullcrap. All the Rangers have their own Zords. Every Ranger has their own Zord. So, you know, I, I really never understood that reasoning. Tommy has his own Zord. Well, Tommy has the Dragon Dagger. Okay, well, Tommy has a Dragon Dagger, and he plays melodies out of it. Okay, Tommy has a shield. Okay, Tommy's head is larger than the others. Okay, well, you know, you can't really say he has his own Zord. But I guess in what they really meant to say was that his Zord had some very interesting combinations. His Zord can combine with the other Zords, with Megazord, to make it even more powerful. Okay, now I can see your reasoning. But one thing that this toy does suffer from its uh, Japanese counterpart is the addition of these little M's. Now, normally this doesn't bother me, but when you have the actual dragon insignia here, well, I guess it's a footprint, and uh, not here, that kind of bothers me. And then when you have the lightning bolts on, on the feet, that kind of bothers me as well, because uh, you think they could have, I know they weren't allowed to use the Z's, but you think they could have put like a generic Z, kind of like the generic M, that way it looks similar to the show, and I never understood why they put green here. Um, it wasn't green in the show, why add green there? 
I can understand adding green here because you want to get rid of that Japanese uh, whatever. And I can understand the, the bolts here and here because you want to get rid of that. And I can kind of understand why you have black here instead of green, but why? It, that really didn't make any sense. The toy itself, getting back to the toy, is got a nice little ingenious design. I mean, you can actually bend, pull and bend the tail so that it can actually stand up properly. The knees move, and that, of course, the arms move, and it's got swivel wrists, but of course, that's all for the uh, transformation. Um, it does not move its head, but of course, the tr Dragon Zord in the show didn't have a movable head, and the jaw can open and close. It's got this little neat electronic feature. There's a switch on its back that you turn on, and the got like this little uh, strobe light effect along with this pulsating noise. That's kind of neat. It's got these huge feet that anchor the toy and keep it sturdy. This thing ain't doing nothing. It ain't going anywhere. And it's got vacuum metalized plastic and a gold trim, which just completes the ensemble. It's got some details, but once again, they're mostly on the feet. It's got like articulate. It's got individually molded toes. It's got like this little piston thing going on, but the rest are just like little wavy lines and such. Not really much detailed. Well, that's enough for Dragon Zord in uh, in its regular mode. Let's bring out its first battle mode. What we want to do is we want to bring back our old friends Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, and Mammoth. Because that's what we're going to need. And what we do is we want to take the tail off, of course. Split the Dragon Zord right down the middle. Take the chest plate out. Put it back together. Got me so far. Now we want to lift up these flaps, fold the legs inward like so, push the arms in, and close the chest plate. Now, he's pretty much done. Now you basically just want to, just like if you were to combine them in Megazord mode. Fold everything down. And these little tabs fit in here. And that actually closes up the Dragon Zord's backside because he does not have a closable, he doesn't he has a big hay hole in the back. Then you just slide those on like so. And there we have it. Oops. Push the mouth down to reveal the robot head. And like I said, uh, for those who missed it, mm, push down this little tad here to reveal the robot head. And there we have Dragon Zord in battle mode. First introduced is Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Then it would just become known as Mega Dragon Zord until the other alternate mode was introduced. Another thing the set includes is this little staff. Wonderfully detailed. Comes with this little peg. You take the chest plate, as you can see there's a hole there, place it on, and the tail drill tip becomes the top, and then for added effect you can uh, turn it on. And there we have the, they call it the power laser drill. I'm going to turn it off now so I don't waste the batteries. Batteries are expansive. 
Now, this combination was pretty much used. Oops, sorry, you saw me there. This combination was pretty much used for the Zords in their, uh, when they needed more firepower. This thing was super strong, but of course, since it was so heavy, possibly because of these large feet, the large drill that it's holding on to, it really couldn't move as fast. It wasn't quick. So, uh, but then again, it's also, it's also got a really nice finisher when it impaled enemies, just impaled them. Very, very gory stuff, and I'm surprised for even a television show that they allowed, some, even what they didn't edit, what they allowed to show. And for another, here's another little 360. As you can see, this completely closes the back of the uh, sword combination. It is a wonderful Zord combination. It is an interesting Zord combination. And uh, my mom actually prefers this to the actual Mega Zord. Yeah, really. She, yeah, she knows about this stuff. And she's cool about it. She, she'd rather I didn't, but, you know, she's not going to change me for who I am. And my girlfriend ain't going to change me for who I am. So, you know, whatever. Well, actually, you know. So there we have it, Dragon Zord in battle mode. Or I like to call Dragon Zord in combat mode.